Hi, and welcome back. Week three, Power Electronics. And in this series of videos for week three, we're gonna co cover a number of different items. First item we'd like to cover is spice models. And I'd like to use an application of TVS diodes, which are surge suppression diodes, and hopefully learn a little something about how to use a, a TVS device in your design. It's a crucial element of design. And TVS diodes do fall under the topic of power electronics. Uh, then I'd like to go in and do a video segment on four, four quadrant uh, motor drive and four quadrant operation of driving a motor or controlling a motor. We'll do a video on that because I feel that understanding those applications is important to also understanding the utilization of power electronics and how to apply certain designs appropriately. After we're done with that, I would like to go and probably do one of the more drier videos that, that I've done, and that's going to be looking at gate charge for turning on a MOSFET. We're gonna start focusing a little bit more on the finer details of the MOSFET, and we'll see uh, that the amount of gate charge necessary to turn that device on and off. And one of my concerns in a past video was we did find a, a MOSFET that we could turn on with five volts, but I was a little concerned about the amount of current or charge required to turn that MOSFET on. And that's gonna lead into another video, gate drivers, and I'm going to start gate drivers first with discrete elements. And the first circuit we're gonna analyze is called a totem circuit. It's based off of a circuit you probably studied in your electronics course called the emitter follower amplifier. That totem circuit's a push-pull circuit. And then finally, the last video, if we have time, I'm going to start looking at high side driving uh, a MOSFET and uh, how we would do that specifically if we had an end channel type device as a high side switch. So thanks a lot and let's get going with the SPICE models. Here's a quick overview for this video segment. I'd like to describe the difference between what's called a sub-circuit and a model. And we're gonna use an example to illustrate that. Then I'm gonna show you a, a very safe way of how to add a model into your circuit. And the model is gonna be based off of some documentation that you can obtain from the vendor. I've obtained this uh, documentation from Born, which is the uh, TVS diode that we're gonna use in this application. Hopefully too, you're gonna to come away and we'll learn a little bit of something about TVS diodes used for uh, ESD and it's also used for um, sur surge lightning type surge protection. So let's let's look at that diode. I wanted to set up an application where we're using the surge protection device. And one of the because my background is in communications, I thought, well, let's look at a communication example. So oftentimes in communications, we have some type of resistive load that terminates a bus of some type, whether it's an RS-423, an RS-422, an RS-232, or even a CAN bus. CAN buses are very popular. And because our, our actual cabling is long, it is susceptible to electro electrostatic discharging, uh, surges that can come on the line, and it's very common and popular to utilize what's called a unidirectional, for this example, TVS diode. And the where that would be wired is right next to our load, and technically it's a, it's a specialized Zener diode that acts to clamp the voltage, here's our, here's our load resistance, that acts to clamp the voltage and keep it from exceeding whatever the breakdown value is. In our example, I'm going to assume that we're using 3.3 volt logic, and so we're going to look at the, the CDSOT23TO3, so that's the one we're gonna look at for this example. I've pre-built a SPICE model, and if you want to pause the video, this, this SPICE model is in Blackboard for you to download. Switching over to SPICE, 
you can see that we have this special circuit over here. Um, I, I did some research and I found this circuit at the source www.uspice.com backslash simple spice ESD generator circuit. This is based off of an IEC standard uh, and there's four four different types of tests. One is electrostatic discharge testing, which is the 61,004-2. There's also an, another test, 61,000-44 and 61,045, which are for um, uh, 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 immunity from electro electric fields and the other one is for surge suppression but i'm just going to look at this simple surge test one of the things that we can do with this is we can set the initial conditions at these two node voltages and c1's a node voltage and c2's a node voltage and then that allows us to set the voltage across capacitor c1 and c2 when we do an initial condition this is going to be a 150 nanosecond transient response and if you notice those voltages that are are set to four kilo kilovolts which is extremely high something that would mimic a an electrostatic dis, discharge so let's run that simulation and if we look across the load, we see we have this very large spike of voltage, something that this 120 ohm resistor probably would not be able to handle. So one of the things we want to do then is add a, a diode, a TVS diode. So I'm going to bring that into our circuit and wire that in. The only problem is when I looked in in the LT Spice library, there wasn't a diode that I really was applicable for this one or that matched that the Born diode that was on the data sheet. So I'm going to switch over to this Spice library that was that I found and on Born's website and it covered all the different diodes in the CDSO223 family. So if we look down here, we're going to see a couple of different things. First, we see we have a dot sub circuit file and it contains nodes one, two and three. I want to switch over to the whiteboard and actually I want to grab this whole segment and bring it over to the whiteboard and talk more about this. Here we show part of the SPICE file that I cut and paste from the library. And alongside of it, I put uh, a circuit diagram or the schematic diagram of the chip from the, the data sheet. And one of the things we'll, you notice here is we have a sub-circuit definition for the, the device. You can create the sub-circuit like we did in last week's video, or we can look at a different way of doing this by using the two model commands here. Let's first look at how this sub-circuit is set up. We notice we have pin one, pin two, and pin three defined in the sub-circuit. We also have two inductors, L1 and L2. L1 goes from pin one to an intermediate pin within the sub-circuit, pin four. L2 goes from pin two to an intermediate node. L1 is sized at 0.8 nanohenries. L2 is also sized at 0.8 nanohenries. Those are lead inductance on the device. I am going to choose to not model those. I could model them if I want, but for what I need to do, I really need to now look at what's connected between pin four and three. And here we see we have the diode command 
always goes with the first the first node number is your anode and the second one is your cathode so there is an anode from four to three with a diode that is modeled with the name dtvs dtvs and here's the model now what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy this whole line right here and I'm going to paste it into my circuit schematic. There's also another diode in parallel with that one also connected between pin 4 and pin 3. This is DID and again this one is DTVS. I'm going to cut and paste that one as well because that's a relatively easy thing to do. And once I do that, I don't have to make special calls to, to different uh, file systems to utilize these, com these devices. So let me show you how we cut and paste that into SPICE. Recall that we wanted this one. I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to create a, a spice directive. And all you have to do is type the hotkey as S for that. And I'll paste that into that window. Once that is done, I need to name this diode the exact name of the model, which is DTVS. As I said, I'm also going to put the DID, which stands for ideal diode, in parallel with that. It's a relatively easy operation. And I have to name this one DID, the same name as the file. And I need to also go back and cut and paste this line in. Now, once I've done this, I can send this file that I save to anyone and they will have these devices or the model for these devices already embedded in them. That's the advantage of embedding the dot model commands into here. Now let's run this and see what happens. If you recall, the voltage across this device was up in the, the two kilovolt range. Hopefully we've done this right. And lo and behold, it has basically uh, shunted or clamped down that a uh, very quick surge to only about 11 volts. So the device is working uh, or simulating well. Obviously, with anything, you have to eventually prototype it and test it out. But, it, but it's nice to see or learn about how to use TVS-type diodes for doing surge suppression on, on your different devices. Hopefully one of the things you take away is the difference between the dot model and the dot subcircuit. The dot model is native to SPICE. It should work in all of the different SPICE variants. Um, in LT SPICE, they actually have two different types of modeling methods for diodes. One is based on Berkeley SPICE 3 and the other is a much more simplified model. The model we used in this example was based off of Berkeley uh, SPICE 3. And it came from a more uh, a larger circuit, a sub-circuit model that I obtained off of the vendor's website. And by cutting and pasting the dot model statement directly into the schematic enables me to share that with other people without having to put other file systems together. Now that may or may not be beneficial. Again, there's, there's multiple ways to create dot models and dot subcircuits and store them in SPICE. Finally, I hope you came away with a appreciation of a power electronic device called uh, the TVS diodes 
and uh, their ability to to provide protection from electrostatic discharge and, and surges that may happen. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.